Hi, I'm Shannon. Hi, I'm Tamara. And we are from Body FX Exercise Physiology. We are accredited exercise physiologists and our role is to help people stay strong and keep moving and modify exercise to suit people who may have different conditions that might impact on their ability to do something as a normal person may that doesn't have any other health conditions. Also, it's particularly important to keep exercising as we age. We need to keep mobile, keep strengthening the muscles and the bones to reduce the risk of falls. Tamara and I are going to take you through a series of exercises that you can do at home with minimal equipment. We will show you two different levels in case the first option you want to progress to make it more challenging. We're going to begin with a simple march on the spot which will help to increase your heart rate and get you warm and ready to do your rest of your exercises. Plus, if you stomp a little harder, it's going to be good for your bones as well, adding some impact for them. So let's get started. We're going to do 30 seconds just marching on the spot. Let's go. While you're marching, you want to stay up nice and tall, keep your arms moving, and if you're feeling good, just start to stomp your feet a little harder. You can hear, we just got a little noisier here. So keep marching, keep marching. We're nearly there. We've done 20 seconds so far. Coming up, we've got five seconds to go. Okay, two, one, and rest. So you should notice that the heart rate gets up you start to breathe a little heavier and that is okay. If you need to march slower or if you want to march for longer, definitely keep going. Our second exercise is for your balance. Now, as Tamara mentioned, balance is really important to help reduce your falls risk as well as helping you to stay balanced. We're going to give you two options. First option is in the tandem balance. We take one foot forward, roughly the heel in line with your toe, but create some space to help you with your balance. Now, for safety, if you need to do this beside a bench or in a corner where you can place your hands to help you feel more confident, then that's ideal. The last thing we need you is falling over. Now, Tamara's going to progress it and have her feet in line. Now, we're gonna hold this for 30 seconds. If you're feeling really confident and you, there is no chance that you think that you're going to fall over, tomorrow's going to show an option with a head turn. Now you may notice that she'll wobble a little bit more and you might not be able to actually see it, but her feet are working pretty hard to help hold her in balance. And we've got 10 more seconds to go and then we're going to swap and do the other side. Five more seconds, two, one, Okay, let's change our feet over to the other side. So if you need to hold on, hold on, set the feet. So I've got one foot a little wider, which is creating a bit more of a stable base. Okay, so let's go with that timer now. We've got 30 seconds going again. And it's normal if you find that one side is a little bit more challenging than the other. You might find that you've got one hip that's stronger than the other. If you're having any discomfort, or you can change your position of your feet as well, just to take away the discomfort. Tomorrow's gonna to go back to the head turns. She gets to only do it for a short time this time. All right, there's our 30 seconds. Well done. Our next exercise that we're going to do is for building leg strength, which is going to help you in your day-to-days when you're getting up out of a chair, out of bed, or off the toilet. We're going to use a chair, which is making it really easy for you to be able to do this exercise safely. And you'll see it's something that you replicate in your day. We're going to have an option of a progression of a regular standing squat, which Tamara's going to do, if you feel that you wanna make it a little bit more challenging. For the chair squat, it's best if you start sitting down. Tamara's going to have her feet a little wider to help with her base of support. When she squats, she's going to make sure her knees go in the same direction as the toes. And I'm going to do the same here, making sure my knees go forward and not inwards. 
So if you're using a chair at home, make sure that you've put it up against something firm so it doesn't slide away from you as you stand and sit. We're going to try to do it without our arms on the chair. If you can't get up, you can do a little push up to start with, but then take the hands away when you sit down. Okay, we're going to do 10 together. You ready? All right, let's go. And you'll notice that Tamara uses her arms to help balance her as well. So we go four down. And if you find that our pace is different from what you need to go to, you go at the pace that suits. Now hopefully my counting is still going well and we should have two more. I did stop counting. All right, that should have us done. We're now going to go to our next exercise, which is going to work in the lower leg. This is important to help with your balance and also walking as well. So it's called a calf raise or may also be known as a heel raise. So we're going to get set up uh, to do this. Something handy for you to have at home is a sturdy object to hold on to to keep you balanced. We're now going to go through the calf raises. It's important that you have your feet set up hip width apart. So you have then your ankles going straight ahead in line with your toes. Now, Tamara's going to do the one-legged option, which is twice as challenging as doing the option I'm doing, which is both legs together. We'll do 10 and then we'll do a second lot so that it gives you opportunity if you're doing one leg at a time, then do the other side. So we're going to go together. Tamara's going to take one foot off the ground and I'm going to stay on two legs. And we're going to go 10 times before we then we'll have a little rest and do the other side for those on one leg. Okay, let's go. So lifting up high and controlling down. We're gonna to try to make sure that we go straight up rather than forward and back. Also thinking about your foot, you'll feel the pressure come up onto your big toe rather than rolling outwards with the ankles. You counting, Tim? We're halfway through. Let's do three more, and then we'll take approximately a 30 second break to then let those doing one leg to change leg. All right, take a break. Now, if, while we're having the break, if you're feeling a little tight and fatigued in the leg, you can give it a little stretch. Tomorrow's going straight in, so we better catch up. So we've about four to go now for those who join straight in with Tamara. Last two. Nice work. So the stretch that we had to do, if you need to, is one big foot stepping back, leaning in, keeping the legs straight, and you'll feel this stretch up the lower leg. Then hold for 30 seconds. Once 30 seconds is complete, then we can swap to do the other side. So let's swap now. And we won't hold for the full 30 seconds right now, but you can definitely continue to hold for as long as you need. And you can come back to it anytime you need to. So stepping out of that, We've got one more exercise to take you through, which is going to work our upper body and chest. Okay, so we're going to take you through your uh, upper body exercise now, which is working on strength to help you push, or to, even when you're rolling over in bed, pushing out of bed. We have a wall push up as the first option, and Tamara's going to take you through a push up on our box that we've got behind. You can use your kitchen bench, or something else that's sturdy that won't slide if you want to increase your difficulty. Obviously, the lower you go down, the harder it's going to be. So we're going to run through 10 of these and then we'll see how we go.
As you do your push-ups, you may have noticed that I took a step back from the wall and I was on my tippy toes. That allows you to pivot on the toes and not get a big stretch in the back of the leg as you move in through your push-up. For each of the exercises that we've been through, we focused on doing 10 repetitions or the ones we did for time was 30 seconds. If you can't do 10, you can do less or if you want to make it more difficult and more of a workout, you can repeat this another 10 times through for each exercise and then again a third time through which would have you completing three rounds or three sets of 10 repetitions. Of course, at any time, if it doesn't feel any good for you or you don't feel safe, you should stop doing the exercise. That's all from tomorrow and after today.